Imagine this, your child is in school when suddenly he's pulled out of the classroom and interrogated by strangers about his home life. Well, that's what one family says happened to a Harlandale High School student. The problem, the state investigators conducting that interview were talking to the wrong kid. The teen telling our Dylan Collier he was afraid the Child Protective Services would take him from his parents if he gave the wrong answer. <laughs> Last Friday, two Child Protective Services employees walked into Harlandale High School, signed in, provided credentials, and the name of a student they needed to interview. Front office staff pulled this teenager. I was in fourth period and I was doing my work. After being walked into a room, the 15-year-old, whose identity we are not revealing, says one of the female CPS investigators asked him questions about himself. I was frightened. My hands were sweating a lot. I was, I was scared. I was, my legs were shaking. A CPS spokeswoman denies that the interview got into specific abuse allegations and was quickly terminated after the investigators realized they were not speaking to the right boy. If they would have took my child and I wouldn't have known where he was. His mother, Angel Lopez, says Harlandale administrators have since apologized. They tell us, well, it turned out it was the wrong school and the wrong student. Child Protective Services hasn't said much about the incident other than that its investigators gather information from places like schools and doctors when making contact with families. In a statement, a Harlandale ISD spokeswoman described the communication breakdown as, quote, campus administration was not notified, which is an issue we have addressed. They will always be notified going forward. CPS did not have the child's date of birth. So the staff at the front office pulled the student whose name matched their request, adding that CPS is given this sort of access because the student's safety could be in danger. Lopez said she plans to file formal complaints against both the district and Child Protective Services. It scared me. It scared me because my, my, my kid, he is in a, he's in a good family. He's in a good home. He has so many people behind him. For the Defenders, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. Just this afternoon, a CPS spokeswoman said the interview with the teen was recorded, but declined to release it or a transcript of it. They claimed it is now part of an ongoing investigation. It was demolished. That's what happened to an office building in the medical center area after it caught fire overnight. That fire reported about 3.30 this morning by someone in the area. But it continued to burn for hours, all while causing issues for firefighters trying to put it out. As you can see, we had multiple collapses, and actually we had the first collapse not too long after the guys were actually operating. The San Antonio Fire Department says surrounding buildings were spared. No one was hurt. They aren't sure what caused the fire. They don't know what the building was exactly used for either. Fire crews also responding to flames at a home on the north side for the second day in a row. This is off of Sage Brush Lane near Nacogdoches and Loop 410. Just yesterday, crews were putting out a fire in the attic. Today, something inside the attic fell into a small gap in the wall, reigniting that fire. The home had already been boarded up. Gas and electricity had also been shut off. No one was home at the time, but damage is estimated at about $100,000. We have learned the names of the two people who died in a murder-suicide on Wednesday. They are 23-year-old Stephanie Giselle Garcia and 26-year-old Ardell Julius Couch. Investigators believe Couch shot Garcia, then turned the gun on himself. Garcia died at the hospital. The Bear County Sheriff's Office described this as a case of domestic violence. We are working to learn more about a man who was killed on the east side this morning. He was one of three people shot outside of a home on Belmont near Giver Street. The shooting happened around 1.30 this morning. Two others were shot and they were sent to the hospital. Their condition right now, we don't know. We do know San Antonio police found about 75 shell casings at this scene. They also took some people in for questioning but at last check had not made an arrest. All right, listen to this $850,000. That's how much money a San Antonio woman embezzled from a Castle Hills business. Now she has to pay it back and spend 33 months in prison. This is 48 year old Cindy Ellen McCarthy, who federal authorities say paid her personal credit cards with the company's bank account from November 2012 to July of 2018. Altogether, there are about 200 transactions. 
This is just heartbreaking. At least 50 people were killed and more than 100 others injured when two rockets hit a train station in Ukraine. The rocket struck the hub at the same time that thousands of people were there trying to flee the area. Among the victims killed at least five children. The U.S. Embassy says it will hold Russian President Vladimir Putin accountable, but the Kremlin is denying responsibility. It has taken 232 years and 115 prior appointments for a black woman to be selected to serve on the Supreme Court of the United States. But we've made it. A celebration underway today in the nation's capital after Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson is confirmed as the newest Supreme Court justice. Today, President Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris and Jackson all delivering remarks on the White House South Lawn. All of them overjoyed with yesterday's vote. Every Democrat in the Senate and three Republicans voting for Jackson. A greater moment for America as we rise to a more perfect union. I've been looking forward to it for a while. Judge Jackson will formally become Justice Jackson this summer. Once Justice Stephen Breyer retires from the high court, she'll be the fourth woman on the Supreme Court, and it will be the first time in U.S. history that white men will be in the minority. How much is your home worth? You may be stunned. Today, the Bear County Appraisal District mailed notices of new valuations and just posted them online. And as we told you last week, they are way up. We're talking nearly 28% on average. 12 in your sides, Marilyn Moritz takes a look at what's going on in some of our neighborhoods. Charles Badenhorn put down his roots in the charming neighborhood he grew up in, Lavaca, where what's old is new. Over the last three or four years, it seems like it, there's been a lot of investment in this neighborhood in particular. And it's boosting property values. Just the dirt under his house has doubled in value in the past five years. Ditto for his neighbor. With the exception of that house and my next door neighbor, every other house is that I can see within my eyesight has been blocked. But it's not just this neighborhood. Notices from the Bear Appraisal District are showing countywide single family property values are up on average, a staggering 27.8%. Those notices are gonna reflect what's gone on in the real estate market from last year to this year. What's gone on is a lopsided market. Inventory is limited and demand is huge, driving sales prices up. We check the listings for Lavaca. For example, this property is more than 100 years old. It's gutted inside, but it's for sale listed at $395,000. The value is the location and the land. Lavaca is not only one of the oldest neighborhoods in the county, it's one of the hottest too. From kind of what I'm hearing, I think entry level houses down here are starting probably at half a million dollars now. And um, which is which is wild. Biedenharn says he bought here because it's home. It turned out to be an investment too. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Live look outside with traffic authority cameras and you can see not a lot of traffic out there on this Friday afternoon. 281 at the quarry, light traffic, everyone moving along just fine. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Abundant sunshine again today. That's resulted in another big temperature swing this morning. A lot of us started off in the mid to upper 40s, but we made it into the 80s. Check out your weather watcher temperatures. A big thanks to our weather watchers for sending in temperatures this afternoon on Friday. 86 in Del Rio, 86 Floresville, upper 70s across parts of the Hill Country, 81 in Lavernia, 82 Seguin, and 79 in New Braunfels. So warm out there now under abundant sunshine. And if you're heading out for any evening festivities, maybe Nio set will be warm to start, but once the sun goes down, we'll get those temperatures in the 70s, eventually the upper 60s, low humidity, light winds. You really can't ask for better weather tonight. Things start to change a bit this weekend. I'll walk you through your weekend forecast, get you a look at what you can expect if you're heading out to Flambeau tomorrow night, and also an update on next week's rain chances. All that will be along in just a bit. Thank you, Katie. We've officially wrapped up the 2022 Fiesta Battle of Flowers Parade and the cleanup has begun. Yeah, crews with Public Works wasting no time this afternoon clearing the parade route as they get ready for tomorrow night's Fiesta Flambeau Parade, which starts at 7. 
One of the traditions of the Battle of Flowers returning this year as thousands of people converged on downtown this morning. Yeah, the parade taking a new route this year because of all the construction going on along Broadway, but that didn't stop people from waking up bright and early, even camping out last night to claim their spots. All of it, of course, an annual tradition brought back this year in full force. I've been here since yesterday, since 8 o'clock. How early did you get here? We woke up at 4, we got here around 5 o'clock. Same feeling when I was 5 years old. You've been coming since you were 5 years old? The parade, oh, yes, sir. with my mom, my, my family. And you know what? We're going to do it again tomorrow night. The 2022 Fiesta Flambeau Parade kicks off at 7 o'clock. KSAT's coverage starts at 6 o'clock. You can watch the live broadcast right here on KSAT 12 or on any of our streaming platforms. And here's a look at the road closures you need to know about. There are quite a few of them, and you need to plan ahead if you're going into the downtown area. You can find all of this information on our website right now. And that's not all we have for tomorrow. If you don't want to wait till tomorrow night, don't forget about the King William Parade happening tomorrow morning in Southtown. It starts at 9 a.m. You can watch the live stream on KSAT.com. And, of course, stick with KSAT 12 for all your Fiesta 2022 coverage. We have more Fiesta 22 coverage coming your way, though. You are looking at a live picture of UTSA's main campus. And there's something going on called Fiesta Fit Fest. John Paul Barajas is there. We're going to check in with him in just a bit. But before we go to break, Sky 12 giving us a live look at the Fiesta Carnival down at the Alamo Dome. Great night to go out and enjoy that. You're watching KSAT 12, the official Fiesta station. Stick with us. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Stephanie Jimenez joining you live from the KSAT newsroom. There is so much going on on this Fiesta Friday, but first we're going to discuss a big problem in South Texas, and that's food insecurity. Inflation totally not helping. Today, the San Antonio Food Bank handed out 270,000 pounds of food. Erika Hernandez speaks with the group about the families who need help. Also, it's a field of dreams that allows special needs kids to play baseball. R.J. Marquez speaks with the founder of the Miracle League of San Antonio as it returns to the diamond after an 18-month hiatus because of COVID. And of course, we're still talking Fiesta, specifically the new parade route. Some of you like it, others, mm, not so much. Garrett Berger hears from homeowners along the route and shares their thoughts tonight at 6. We'll have all that and much more coming your way in less than an hour. Back to you. Thank you, Stephanie. And of course, we've been covering Fiesta 2022 all week long. Today, no different. Yeah, this morning, all about the Fiesta Battle of Flowers Parade. If you missed the action, well, there's still plenty of fun happening tonight at an event called the Fiesta Fit Fest. John Paul Barajas joins us now live from UTSA's main campus where this is going on. John Paul, when you think about Fiesta, you think food and drinks. Something different about Fit Fest, I'm guessing. Yeah, well, of course, you said it. You think Fiesta, you think about all the cold drinks, the sugary ones, some alcoholic, some not. And then all the food, the tacos, the chicken on a stick, sauce on a stick, all that good stuff. But here at Fiesta Fit Fest, the first year they're ever doing it here uh, for Fiesta, hold on. You can still enjoy all that goodness and not have to worry about your waistline. It's all guilt free because you're staying active while you're doing it. Now, we all know that in Texas, everything's bigger in Texas. Unfortunately, sometimes that includes our waistline. So. This is a great event to check out. Now, people are still filing in right now because the opening ceremonies are going to be kicking off here at 6. And then they'll have the first kickoff event, which is the Beer Mile. They also have a lot of activities set up that you can just uh, walk up to and enjoy. They got this little obstacle course where basically you're going to be driving around a little adult-sized tricycle. And then tomorrow, or before I get to tomorrow, you want to be out here tonight at 10 if you can, or before 10, around 9 and 8 o'clock, because they have a free concert by Jack Ingram. Now let's get to tomorrow. Tomorrow they have the 5Ks, the 10Ks, and my personal favorite event that I am going to be partaking in is the Alpha Warrior Obstacle Course. Alpha Warrior Obstacle Course. Uh, so it looks pretty intense. So if you want to see how I fare and how I do, I'm going to get to do it uh, here shortly. You can tune in tonight at 10. So lots of stuff to check out and be able to enjoy all the food and good stuff and not have to worry about it. Guilt free. We'll have a lot more information at 6 once this event gets kicked off. Back to you guys. 
All right, John Paul, did I hear that right? He's going to do the Alpha Warrior Challenge and tonight. You're up for the beer mile. I'll do the beer mile, yeah. No, but no, I, no, he, no. Well, I don't know. He had my attention <laughs> at the beer mile, I'll put it that way. But I was like, he's going to do the Alpha Warrior thing? All right, John okay. Paul. Okay. All right. Yeah, way to go. There's, we see the carnival in full swing right now by the Alamo Dome. What a great day for a parade. Oh, yeah. Had to have a jacket this morning, though. Uh-huh. Couple of layers. That's not always the case. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, tomorrow, for tomorrow's tomorrow night's parade, Flambeau, the it's still going to be comfortable. The change, though, there will be more wind tomorrow. This morning, winds were light. Tomorrow evening, it'll be a touch windy at times. We'll have some wind gusts tomorrow during the day and also in the evening up to 30 miles per hour. Otherwise, with low humidity, clear skies, it's going to be really comfortable tomorrow night for Fiesta Flambeau temperatures across the area 85 Laredo 82 from Eagle Pass up to Del Rio looks like we're missing our reading at the airport currently but let's call it somewhere in the low 80s at 79 Boulevardy 79 in comfort to 82 in divine new numbers are coming in uh, as we speak our air is still so dry 20s and teens for our dew points that's that static shock kind of dry air chapstick weather, whatever you want to call it, really low humidity, and that helped our temperature swing from morning to afternoon over the next few days by about 30 degrees. Winds are light right now, a bit of a breeze here and there, 14 mile per hour winds at Kerrville, 13 at Stinson, uh, mainly though winds are light. Things will be changing tomorrow though. By Saturday afternoon, out of the south, uh, breezy conditions, even a little windy at times tomorrow, are sustained winds between about 10 and 20 miles per hour for the majority of the day and some wind gusts up near 25, even close to 30 miles per hour at times on Saturday. So that'll be a change tomorrow. The wind will be a lot more noticeable. So pair that with continued very low humidity on Saturday. And yes, you may have gotten the alert on your phone or on your Alexa, whatever it may be. Really hope I didn't make Alexis go off at home. So sorry. Uh, red flag warnings in place again tomorrow from noon to 8 p.m. We're going to continue to see these issued. You guys, anytime we have gusty winds, low humidity in place until we can get rounds of good soaking rain to get this drought under control, we're going to continue to see these to be issued likely over the coming months. So kind of just get used to this. And again, this means that fires, if they start, they can spread very rapidly. So please avoid any outdoor burning tomorrow. Our humidity does start to increase during the back half of the weekend. By Sunday night, our dew point numbers will go from the teens, 20s, where they are now, back into the 60s. That means it will start to feel a bit more muggy by late in the weekend and into early next week. Now that coincides with rain chances in the forecast, but these are not rain chances to get too excited about at all. I want to walk you through the setup here. We've got a big dip in the jet stream over the eastern United States. That's where you see some precipitation there, even some wintry precipitation up closer to the Great Lakes. Well, what happens through early next week is that that moves out and then we see another big dip in the jet stream over the western United States. That's more favorable for us to see rain chances. But we really need this dip to go farther south to help us out. So unfortunately, even with this weather pattern change, we're only bringing in isolated chances of showers and storms Monday later in the day, Monday into Tuesday of next week. It's not going to be all the rain we need, not by a long shot, but we'll get a few yards some rain Monday, Tuesday next week. As for tonight, clear skies, wonderful. If you don't have plans outdoors in the next few hours, try to make them at least open the windows for a little bit because it's going to be so nice. Another comfortable day tomorrow minus the wind. Wind will be more noticeable on Saturday. By Sunday, humidity works back in and then we've got those low end rain chances late Monday and Tuesday next week, guys. All right, Viva Fiesta. Absolutely. One more weekend. All right, the math pretty easy for the Spurs right now. Yeah, you got to win out to have a shot at home court advantage in the play-in tournament against New Orleans. When we come back, we'll tell you why that is. And the state game's underway finally at Morgan's Wonderland when we come back. Our San Antonio Spurs must win out their remaining two games of the regular season. The New Orleans Pelicans must lose out in order for San Antonio to catch New Orleans for the ninth playing position and the home court advantage that goes along with that one game. That's after the Spurs lost to the Minnesota Timberwolves last night and the Pelicans beat the Blazers at home. The Spurs got off to a slow start. Anthony Edwards took advantage of that, scoring 15 of the T-Wolves, 30 points in the first quarter. But Devin Vassell hits back-to-back -back threes to trim the Wolves' lead to seven at the half. Now, the Wolves would get up to as much as 18-point lead, but in the 
effort to get Edwards 50 points as Spurs come back. Back-to-back -back buckets by Joshua Primo. Two free throws cut that lead down to four with just over eight seconds to play. That's as close as the Spurs could get. They do. We went down 19 or something like that. Still kept fighting, fighting, fighting. So, uh, you know, yeah. we kept fighting. I'm proud of, proud of me and my teammates, all our coaches. We kept fighting. Um, and on top of that, we don't have – our, star, our starting point guard, so that tells you a lot. All right. Last home game of the regular season, that'll be tomorrow at 7.30 against the Warriors. Now, that game against the Warriors will be the Spurs' final home game of that regular season. In addition to that, it is a fan appreciation night. We'll also give the silver and black an opportunity to salute the man who brought the Spurs to San Antonio in 1973, B.J. Red McCombs, as part of the original ownership group. Spurs head coach Greg Popovich recalls meeting Red, who is now 94 years young, for the very first time. You just fall in love with the guy. He's bigger than life is what I really mean by that. And I can remember the first time he walked in the gym in his big cowboy boots and his fur coat and that big hat, and I had no idea where I had landed. Uh, <laughs> but I uh, learned a lot from him, and uh, he's special to a whole lot of people. Sure is. An estimated 250 athletes with physical disabilities and visual impairments from across the state of Texas gathered today at Morgan's Wonderland Sports to begin competition in nine sports at the 11th Annual Texas Regional Games presented by Hartford Insurance. It continues through this Sunday. Besides Morgan's Wonderland, competition also being held at Hero Stadium and Star Soccer Complex that included archery and tennis competition. Remember, these are the games that have been postponed twice due to the COVID pandemic. Great to see them back. And at the Masters, let's see who's on top. The hottest golfer right now, the PG Tour, Scotty Scheffler, leading by three strokes, and he's still on the course at 13. Tiger Woods, one over, but also still on the course. Can improve on that before the cut line is announced. And plus one, he'd make the cut right he now. Would, right now, he would. Yes. All right. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. We got a birthday in the Oh, house. no. I was like, what is Katie doing leaving the weather desk? I had to time it just right. Yeah, you did. You, <laughs> did, you timed it very well. We were trying to keep it a secret that we were going to wish you a very happy birthday oh, today. Oh, thank Royal you. Royal birthday. Uh, yeah. One, well, one would say. I don't know about that. But Sir Steve <laughs> Sir Brewster. Steve Brewster. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you. Happy birthday. Yeah. Happy 35 birthday. years old. Yeah, yeah. Add 20. <laughs>